This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Uh, we are, the title for today's show is uh, Closing the Gap How to Come Back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And it's a show uh, for, for those people who feel, and this is something we often, uh, many of us probably have felt at one point or another in our lives. Uh, that we are so far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't know how to come back. And so um, today's show is actually uh, sort of um, about about that topic and about how, how do we deal with that when we do feel distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But before I begin on that topic, I actually wanted to share a, a personal experience which was uh, very powerful uh, for me, and uh, I I hope that inshallah we can gain uh, some lessons from it uh, for for listeners, and and again a reminder for myself. And uh, as some of you know, uh, I live in Southern California, and this is you know where we air the show. And last night I was asleep, and um, I actually got woken up by an earthquake. And uh, Subhanallah the the um if you you can imagine uh what what that's like when you're you're it's you're basically unconscious in a sense when you're asleep and then all of a sudden you're being shaken and subhanallah uh you know when that happened uh the the thought you know that it brings to mind uh is that this is this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us and um i i posted a status actually about it last night and then subhanallah this morning I I was also asleep and got woken up by another earthquake, and and, and so I you know I just I can't not uh, reflect on this because, um, e- you know, so many of us are asleep, um, and we we don't really realize, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is waking us up that these things, um, for example, the earthquake that that I felt last night and the earthquake that I felt again uh, this morning and, and the earthquake that, that everyone in this in this area felt is just a reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his mercy of just a glimpse of what the day of judgment um, will be like. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Nazal Zalat Sa'ati Shay'un Azim that indeed the shaking of the of the day of judgment of the hour is a mighty thing. Uh, we are supposed to be um, waking up from our slumber. We're supposed to be waking up and realizing that all of these things that are distracting us are just putting us to sleep. And we need to wake up uh, because every one of us will be woken up, whether we like it or not, at the time of our death. Uh, our death is not really a death, but it's actually a waking up. It's a it's a crossing over to another life and it's it's the real the real life now uh, the life we're in now is sort of the test drive it's uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, in surah al-mulk tabarak alladhi biyadihi al-mulk wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir alladhi khalaq al-mawta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala it is he who created death and life in order to test you which of you are best in deeds this this whole creation of death and life in this in this world, the creation of death itself, the creation of life itself in dunya, is to test us, which of us are best in deeds, and we don't really wake up from this dreamlike state of dunya until we die. But 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 the goal of of a believer is to wake up earlier. The goal of a believer is to be able to wake up while they're still alive in this in this world and waking up uh, means that you're able to see this life for what it is that it is a test that it is um, ultimately an illusion uh, that if you if you depend on the things in this world 
um, you will be let down because these things are not real in and of themselves. They are all the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reflections of Him. He is the source. And if we don't see that, if we can't see through everything in this life and 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 view Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind it, then we have missed the point. Then we have become distracted. Then we have fallen asleep. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His mercy, sends us things to wake us up. Literally, um, literally to wake us up. He shakes us. And subhanAllah, it's... um. Again, this isn't something that, that I can just say um, for, you know, literary effect, but this is literally, um, this is actually what, what happened to me twice uh, in the last 12 hours, is I was actually woken up, physically woken up by two earthquakes. And this is, this is just a reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us to wake up. We are really asleep and we're running after things. Um, we're, we're running after money. We're running after other people were running after what you know what what keeps us up at night it's wondering and worrying about what are people thinking of me and what have people done to me and what are people going to do to me and and what's happening with my reputation or my status or um you know what what's happening with my career and 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 am i losing money am i gaining money i mean the things that are consuming our minds and our hearts are all just um, illusions. We are fast asleep. And and what today's show is about is about waking up from that sleep. And how do you do that? Because when you're asleep, you're, you're, you're not aware of the reality. When you're asleep, you're in a dream world. And you think while you're asleep that the dream world is real, right? When you have a dream, uh, you believe while you're in the dream that it's very, very real. Uh, if it's a good dream or it's a bad dream. If it's a good dream, you're very happy with it. And if it's a bad dream, you're terrified. But you believe that it's real while you're in it. And it's only when you're able to wake up from that dream that you look back and you see the dream for what it is. And you know that it was just an illusion and that it was absolutely temporary. Uh, we know only when we wake up that a dream actually only lasts a few seconds. Similarly, when we wake up from this life and the people on the Day of Judgment ask each other, how long were you in that life? People will say, yawman aw ba'da yawm. Uh, the people will say, a day or part of a day. And then they'll say, ask those who are keeping track. Because it, it will feel like nothing. It will feel like, like it was even not even a full day. And yet while we are in this dream of dunya, it feels so real. And it feels like it will never end until something comes to shake us. And this is actually what happens when we encounter events in our life which wake us up. Sometimes those events are, are tragic. Sometimes those events are lost. Sometimes those events are things that that bring us back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it shows us, it exposes for us our own desperate need for Him. And I don't know, you know, there are few better examples than an earthquake. When you sit and you reflect on an earthquake and, and you compare it to for example, some other natural disasters. I used to live in the Midwest where the natural disaster was uh, tornadoes. And in, in, in Wisconsin where I grew up, we would have something called a siren, a tornado siren. And it was something they would, they would uh, practice, you know. So it was the first Wednesday of every month they would play the siren. It was, um, there was a system for predicting tornadoes um, you could you could somewhat predict it you could spot it you can you can see where it is um, you know using their system you can see you can follow where it, where it's going uh, you can give people warnings um, there's there's a system called a tornado watch and a tornado warning uh, you know the watch means that the weather is in you know is it, it's the type of weather that could be you know conducive for for a tornado and a tornado warning means they've actually spotted one so it's like you feel some sort of maybe some false sense of security that at least you can know ahead of time you can predict it somewhat and you can you know uh, take shelter but with an earthquake you know and and even even with a with a tornado is there's this, there's this concept of taking shelter, right? Um, for a tornado, y you, you're supposed to get under the ground because a tornado can just, you know, just goes at ground level. Um, and so there's, 
you know, you need to have like basements and those types of places and that kind of things go underground. So, you, you know, you, you, you have these two things, you have a somewhat of a warning and then you have a place you can go for shelter. But when you reflect about an earthquake, um, it, it, it's so scary because there's like really no warning. It just hits, it just shakes you. And, and, and where are you going to go when the whole earth is shaking? Where are you going to go to hide? Um, you know, where is that shelter where it's where you can run away from it? And I think that's just such a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and of his power um, that you cannot escape um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except by going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is la malja wa la manja minka illa ilayk. That there is no there's no refuge. There's no there's no way to hide um, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, except in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the only refuge and he is the only thing that we should be running away from and running to. Um, subhanallah, we run away from the anger and the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by running to the the protection and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's 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 an in, it's there's there's nothing else like it. Where that the only thing we should really be protecting ourselves from is him and the only thing we should really be protecting ourselves in is him. It's just him. La ilaha illallah. Uh, so this 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 waking up, this awakening, is where we have to um, we have to go back to. We have to we have to shake out of this coma uh, that we're in. Uh, we are so drunk with the with the love of this life, and and, and you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Yawma tara nasa sukara, wa ma hum bi sukara, walakinna adab Allah shadid." That uh, that day when He's describing the the shaking of the day of judgment. Um, he says, that on that day when you see the people drunk, but they're not drunk, it, it's that the that the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe. And, and, and so we're, we're d- those people are being described as, as acting as though they're drunk from the terror. Um, we, we are, subhanAllah, we are asleep and we are drunk. Um, but we are, we are so intoxicated with the love of this life and we need to really wake up out of that the question is how how do we do that it begins by seeing the reality for what it is you see that this life is something that is given to us for a particular reason allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not do anything without a purpose he didn't just put us in this life to eat drink and be merry and just you know buy buy clothes and get a big house you know get 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 married make money and then die uh, that is not the reason why he put us in this world there is a pr- there is a there is a purpose why you uh, have been created there is a purpose why i have been created and if we are not seeking that purpose then we will have failed uh, this 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 test we will have failed uh, this, the ultimate uh, reason of why all of this is here now, uh, if you think about uh, these these people who go through life and never really ask, why am I here? Where am I going? Uh, it's a lot like a person who um, is living one day in, um, say they're living in Los Angeles, and the next day they find themselves um, in a completely new place, um, a deserted island you know, on the other side of the globe. And that person gets up, looks around and says, oh, okay. And then they just start living their life and and n- never ask, how did I get here? Or why am I here? And who brought me here? And what, you know, how do I get back home? You know, no one, uh, no one would act that way. If we wa- all of a sudden found ourselves on a deserted island tomorrow, we would probably ask a couple questions. We would probably wonder how we got there um, and what we're doing there and how to get back home, <laughs> right? And and this is really the 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 types of basic questions that we need to be asking about this world. We just ended up here. We just ended up here and we don't bother to ask why. We don't bother to ask how we got here. We don't bother to ask uh, where we're going or why we're here. We don't bother to ask how do we get back home. And these are questions that as believers we need to ask and we need to find the answers to these questions which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Allah throughout time 
has sent messengers to give us the answers to these questions from the beginning of time Allah has never left us Allah when he sent Adam alayhi salam down to this earth he told him that if there comes to you as there will a guidance from me whoever follows that guidance on them shall be no fear nor shall they grieve that la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun that that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this when he sent Adam down to this earth yes he is sending Adam down to this earth to a place where there will be um, some people who will be enemies to one another there will be uh, bloodshed there will be these things but and this is the very important but there will be a guidance that Allah will send throughout time and he will preserve and he will never allow it to be lost throughout time every t- every every instance that where the the guidance or the message was corrupted or lost Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala renewed it Allah sent a new messenger because Allah promises this guidance to us and Allah promises to preserve it so we never have to worry about uh, where am I going to get guidance or is that guidance going to be there the guidance is promised to us as it was promised to Adam alayhi salam when he first was sent down to this earth the question is only am I following that guidance am I seeking the answers to those questions and if I am then there will be no fear upon me nor shall I grieve Inshallah, I will take uh, our first short break now and returning, we will continue on this question of how do I return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Today we are talking about this question of closing the gap and what to do when we feel distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how do we go back. This is a question that I think we all face at one point or another if we're uh, paying attention. I think that uh, it's only when when the heart is dead, that it doesn't even notice the distance between um, the, that that person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we feel that distance, then at least it means there is some life left in the heart. And there is always a chance to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to close that gap. Uh, we I shared this morning, uh, earlier in the show, I shared a story about something that happened to me. Uh, this just this morning and and also last night and that is that I was uh, fast asleep and I got woken up by an earthquake uh, twice uh, it happened last night at around 11 30 p.m. and again this morning and subhanallah just the the reflections and the signs uh, that we can really learn and the lessons that we can learn from this uh, we need to wake up we need to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is reminding us. Allah in His mercy sends us these things to remind us. He shakes the earth to remind us about a about the real shaking, right? This is just um you know, the this is just a glimpse. Uh the real shaking is the shaking of the day of judgment. In Nazal Zalata Saati Shayunadim. Indeed the shaking of the hour is a mighty thing. That is the real shaking. And this is Allah reminding us. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning us. We need to wake up. We are asleep and we need to wake up. But how do we wake up? Uh, First, we need to see this world for what it is. We need to ask these questions. Why am I here? What is my purpose? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put me here just to run after my career, just to make a lot of money, just to get married, uh, just to to look a certain way, just to have a certain status, or just so people can say really great things about me, or or just so people can think highly of me? Is that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put me here? And if we think that that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us here, we are sorely mistaken. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a much more sublime purpose for us. Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِعَبُدُونَ 
We have not created jinn and human beings except to fulfill ubudiyya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except to worship Him and, and, to, and to, to know Him and to love Him and to obey Him. This is our purpose. Why are we, why, why this life? Why dunya? Why, why was life and death created? Allah also tells us, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala, In order to test you which of you are best in deeds. This is the reason why Allah created death and life. It is to test us. And if we're being tested, the question we have to ask ourselves is, how are we doing in that test? Uh, because we all get a grade at the end of the test. Uh, but the difference between this test and the tests that we take in our universities is that the professor in our universities does not help us in our test. The professor is, in fact, not allowed to help in, in those tests. If you were taking a test and you raise your hand and you tell the professor, hey, can you uh, help me out with this exam? Can you, can you tell me the answer? Uh, you're probably going to be in a lot of trouble because that's cheating. And we sometimes view the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same way. We think that when the test is given to us, that we have to answer on our own. And, and we're not allowed, we think we're not allowed to raise our hand and ask for help. But that couldn't be farther from the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not giving you the test so that he can stand back and he's high above any analogy, he, so that he can go back and just watch and he can just watch and see how you do without um, any you know any help that's not the point the reason that's not the point is because none of us none of us no matter who we are can do anything without his help so if we think that we're going to take this test and you know i got this and and um, i'm going to do this on my own and i'm going to rely on me right this self-sufficiency that the human being has and um, i'm going to rely on me um, and and i'm going to be firm and i'm going to do this we will fall because we cannot rely on me i cannot rely on me because i am a creation and i am weak and there is no way that i can achieve anything without his help la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah there is no change in state or power or strength except by allah this is uh, the prophet uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that this statement la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah is is a treasure from the treasures of jannah we need to reflect on the statement we are not we have no power or strength we cannot change anything we cannot do anything except by allah so when that exam is given to us and if we're not asking for allah's help then we will we will fail we have to ask we have to seek allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know this that is the purpose of your test the purpose of your test is to raise your hand and ask for help allahu akbar subhanallah it is completely different than the creation the creation doesn't want to help you the creation wants to watch the creation wants you know the, the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you run to allah and you the more you run to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you beg for help the more he comes towards you allah tells us if you take one step towards him he takes 10 steps towards you if you go towards Allah, walking, Allah comes with speed. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you go towards the creation, running, guess what happens? The creation runs away from you. That is the nature of the creation as opposed to the nature of the creator. When you run after dunya, dunya runs away from you. When you are weak in front of dunya, dunya steps on you but when you are weak in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you run to allah and you ask for help from him he comes towards you more in fact when you humble yourself in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he elevates you and when it and, and and yet subhanallah when we try to you know if we if we do that with the creation when we when we come to the creation helpless and and in need and empty you will find that you will only be humiliated further when you go to the creation like that. When you go to the creation for help and you go to the creation for, you know, to, to fill your emptiness, right? Your absolute need. This doesn't mean we never seek help from the creation. Yes, we go to the doctor and we, we ask our friends for help and that's, that's fine. Uh, that's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I am talking about absolute need. When I am in my, my, my absolute 
lowest place when I am absolutely empty and I am in absolute need where do I turn first and if it's to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he elevates you and he fills you and he comes nearer to you and if it's to the creation it's the complete opposite we become humiliated further and the creation and the dunya only runs away from you the more you run after it the more it runs away from you so knowing this life for what it is it is a test if you know that then you'll do a lot better uh, if you're sitting in in a class and the teacher hands out a piece of paper and you think that that piece of paper is just you know scratch paper you're probably not going to take it very seriously whatever is on that paper but if that professor tells you what I'm handing to you right now is your final exam and you know that your performance on that exam is going to be significantly better than if you thought it was just some scratch paper to scribble on. Our problem is a lot of us believe that this life is just scratch paper to scribble on, that it's just pointless, that there's no real you know, reason why we're here. We're just kind of going through the motions. Um, you know, we're just, I feel like doing this, so I do it, right? I have this inclination, so I follow it. I'm just being taken this way and that way by my own desires and by the trends of society. Society tells me to dress a certain way, I hear and I obey. You know, there was a point when, when jeans actually looked like jeans, you know, and now um, over time they've become tights and it's like nobody seems to notice <laughs> this, this change. And, and I mean, I've, I, I, <laughs> I've watched this and it's just, it's amazing, but it's like somehow become normal um, that, that jeans are no longer pants anymore. Even they're tights and, and, and we just, we just go with the trend. If society says uh, this is in style now, we hear and we obey tomorrow. Society says actually, uh, these tighter jeans are in style now so we hear and we obey and now you know we're at a point where really there's no difference between tights and jeans and we hear and we obey and we just we, d we do what society commands us to do this isn't the way we should be as as believers Allah Allah's messenger has told us that when we become that way um, when we become just you know uh, just going with the trend and we have no firm firmness uh, that we become like the froth on the ocean. And the Prophet ﷺ predicted the state that we would be in, in, this, in this, at this time. And he said that there will come a time when your enemies will come and attack you like, like wolves or like, um, you know, prey, how they, they come and attack their prey and they will call others to also attack you. And the companions, they heard this and they asked, is it because we will be small in number? And the Prophet ﷺ said, no, it, you will actually be large in number. But Allah will take the fear from the hearts of your enemies, of you, and instead put wahan in your hearts. And when they asked what is wahan, he said, حب الدنيا وكراهية الموت. It is the love of dunya, the love of this life, and the hatred of death. We see that the condition we are in, this, this, you know, the, the Prophet ﷺ described that we will be like the froth on the ocean, you know, the scum. If you look at any, you know, if you, when you look at the ocean, you'll see that above the waves, there's just these like bubbles, like kind of scum. And it has no weight. It's, it's, it, it has no direction. It kind of just goes where the trend or where the tide takes it. And this is the way we as an ummah have become. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ predicted and what he said would happen. We become that way. And the reason we become that way, and what is the result? The result is that our enemies come and attack us like, like wolves come and, and, and collect others to eat their prey. I mean, look at us. Look at where we are in the world. Look at what's happening to us. And, and we're told that the reason this happens is because of this, this wahan in our hearts. We are so in love with dunya and we are so afraid of death. We are so afraid of returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't even want to think about our meeting with Allah. We don't even want to, 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 to anyone to speak about it, um, that we are going to die. We are so in love with dunya and as a result it has made us so weak. It has made us in the situation that we are we are in now. In order to, to bring us back from that situation, 
we have to remove this wahan from our hearts. We have to remove and wake up from this love of dunya, this 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 deep slumber that we're in, and this drunkenness with the love of life. It, and it, you know, the only way to do that is to really see this life for what it is. And one of the easiest ways, one of the easiest ways to 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 see this life for what it is, is when you compare it to something better when you compare it to something more real. And, and, and if you look at this example, uh, if you think about a child who is so in love with a toy car, it, it, might, it might be a very fancy car. It's a Ferrari, right? A toy Ferrari. And that child cannot let go of the desire for that Ferrari. The child saw it in the store window and cannot let it go. And that child continues to just be obsessed with it every time he walks by the store. He wants that Ferrari. But what happens when that child grows up and now the child sees through the store window to a real Ferrari? What happens to his attachment to the fake Ferrari? What happens to his his love and obsession for the toy car? Naturally, what happens is it just completely is is overpowered by the the awe and the you know the love that he has for the real one he saw the real thing so the fake model mm, becomes small in his eyes and this is the same thing with with this life we we we're so in love with this this life like that toy car because we don't see the real car we don't see the real thing uh, the real thing is is the hereafter allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this life as al haya it is the life Hayat al dunya. In the same ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the hereafter as al hayawan. And this word in Arabic is an exaggerated form of, of the word life. It's the exaggerated, more real, more true life. Uh, the hereafter is the real life. This life is the lower life. You can see this even in the word that Allah chose for this life. Dunya. Dunya means that which is lower from the from the root word that means that which is lower. By definition, this life is the lower life. And we can only see it as the lower life when we compare it to the to the real life, to the higher life. And that's Akhira. You know, once you do that, it becomes a lot easier to let go of the obsession. Um, but but we have to do that. We have to see the hereafter. We have to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you compare Allah to anything in this life, what is this life compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What, what is this life compared to the pleasure of Allah? What is this life and everything in it compared to being with Allah in the hereafter? Or, or even before, even before the hereafter, being with Allah in this life. You know the the scholar, as the scholar said, he who does not he who does not enter the paradise of this life will not enter the paradise of the hereafter. And what is the paradise of this life? The paradise of this life that he's referring to, rahm, rahmatullah alayh, is the nearness to Allah in this life, the pleasure of Allah, knowing that Allah is pleased with you, feeling close to Him, that is the paradise of this life. And if that's something we didn't experience in this life, then then you know, then we won't experience it in the hereafter. But this is this this life and, and everything in this life is is just the a glimpse of the hereafter. Those people who were near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life will be nearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next life. وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ الْمُخَرَّبُونَ That those who are foremost in their worship of Allah in this life, أُولَٰئِكَ الْمُخَرَّبُونَ They will be the ones who are nearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next life. Inshallah, we will take another short break now. And when we return, we will continue on this important topic of returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Uh, we are continuing the discussion today about how to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we feel so far away from Him. And, uh, you know, in order to get somewhere, uh, to get to any destination, we have to be able to remove the barriers that keep us from that destination. And in this path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are also barriers that keep us away from reaching uh, our final goal, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Um, some of those barriers that we need to know and, and remove. One of the barriers is our own sins. And every time we commit a sin, uh, it puts a, a black spot on our heart. And that black spot remains there if we do not repent. The next time we commit a sin, another black spot is put on our hearts. And again, it remains there if, if we do not repent. And over time, the the um, presence of those black spots actually makes it easier to sin the next time. So it, it, it was maybe uh, a little bit difficult the first time, but it becomes easier the next and then even easier the third. And, and progressively, as our heart gets covered more and more by the stain of those sins, by those black spots, our heart becomes more and more sick. And a sick heart doesn't feel anymore the pain of committing sin. It, it doesn't feel anymore even aware of, of that sin and until the heart becomes covered with those black spots and and Abu Billah the heart can become dead um, and and so the question then is how do we cure these things can the can a, can someone come back um, if their heart is dead and can someone come back if the heart is sick and the answer is absolutely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us um, in surah al-hadid alam ya'nin alladhina amanu an takhsha qulubuhum li dhikrillah وما نزل من الحق ولا يكون كالذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبل فطال عليهم الأمد فقصد قلوبهم. Allah is warning us in this ayah. Do not be like those people. Um, he begins by saying, Has the time not come? ألم يأنن الذين آمنوا أن تخشع قلوبهم لذكر الله? Has the time not come for the hearts of the believers to be humbled by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa taala? And then he warns us and says, وَلَا يَكُنُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِ and, and, they don't be, and that they do not be like those who were given the book before. فَطَالَ عَلَيْهُمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ And so the time you know, went over, you know, time um, lasted and um, time went by and their hearts became hardened. And Allah is telling us, you know, he's he's telling the believers here, right? He's he's addressing the believers. Is it not time that our hearts should become humbled by his remembrance? وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ And what he has revealed from the truth. And, the, and what he has revealed from the truth. And that we don't be like those who came before. That, that, that you know, over time, you know, at first you, you, you hear something and, and, you know, maybe it affects you. But, you know, over time... The, these is the stain of sin for example it takes over and we're not repenting and so our hearts become hardened and Allah then goes on to say in the next ayah and this is the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know some people who don't understand this um, might think that that Allah is changing subjects in the next ayah right that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now is talking about the dead earth right like first he's talking about the hearts and then the next ayah in surah al-hadith he talks about the, the earth that Allah is the one who gives life. He's saying to us, know that Allah is the one who gives life to the dead land, to the dead earth. Um, so what is the connection here? And you can see that Allah in the ayah before is talking about the dead hearts, about the hardened hearts. And then in the next ayah, he's saying that, that, that the hardened and dead earth, Allah can give life to it. So we are supposed to know that if Allah, the same you know, the same one who can give life to the dead land can give life to the dead heart. Uh, we can always go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent. And this is really the, 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 the practical step that we can take out of this, inshallah. Our hearts are covered with, these stain, with the stain of our sins. And those sins create a barrier between us and Allah. That is our barrier. But it's a barrier that we created with our own hands. And it can be removed 
through tawbah. It can be removed through istighfar, through repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, coming back to Allah consistently. It's not something we just do once. It's not just something, you know, we, we you know, one day we decided we're going to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stop clubbing and we decided to wear hijab and that's it. We repented once and now we live through, you know, go through our life. That isn't the way it works because all of us sin every single day. We are human beings and we need to constantly be cleaning the heart. No human being... Uh, would go a month without taking a shower. I mean, that's just gross, right? Um, and yet we go long periods of time without cleaning our hearts. Uh, we clean our bodies. We take care of our bodies. We feed our bodies. But we, we leave our, our souls to starve. And, and you know, this, this brings us to the next barrier that ends up, you know, keeping us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is... Uh, the the something called ghafla, heedlessness. We are so distracted by everything around us. We are so distracted by our families and our school and our career and our and our apps on our phone and our texts and our and our internet, uh, Facebook. We're just really so distracted. There's no moment when we can just pause and just think right and reflect like what am i doing and how am i doing and and where where is my relationship with allah and and what am i going to in what state am i going to be when i stand in front of him am i prepared to meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and and remembering death this is something which our prophet peace be upon him told us to do regularly he he told us to remember death are we doing that or is it something we're trying to avoid because we're so caught up in 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 just partying in just being in this life and you know all different stages of life we get caught up in different things but it's all dunya it's all dunya allah talks about this um in in the quran you know when he says and also surah al-hadid when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that and he goes on and, and, and names one after the other. Know that the life of this world is play and amusement. And you know, we, we go from one type of uh, dunya obsession to another depending on our stage in life. So when you're young, dunya is all about play, right? That's all you care about when you're little is just playing and you know anyone who has children knows that kids get very upset if you take away their playtime you know they they wake up in the morning and the first thing they ask is you know can we go play um with a friend or can we go to chuck e cheese or can we you know it, it's it's all that occupies their mind is, is just playing um and then and then we move on to lahu as we get older uh now what not so much playing with action figures matters so much to us but now it's more about amusement entertain me right uh the video games and the movies and the music it's 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 entertainment business now that matters um once you get to to be you know a little bit older in middle school and that that kind of thing um zina was next and zina is um you know kind of how you appear right this um beautification and when you you, you look at again the next stage um maybe around high school uh, those of you who who know or remember uh, or are in that stage, what matters most is how you look, how you appear, uh, what are you wearing, you know, what brand, how does your hair look. Um, this is the stage in our life where we spend um, an hour getting ready um, or more. Who knows? Uh, th- this is the time when it when it's like it really matters what one looks like. Again, the aspect of dunya that one becomes lost in at that particular stage, and then you get older. Tafakhurun baynakum, and you get older and it's about boasting it's about which college did i get into which did you get into which job did i get how much money are you making how much am i making it's it's that we have to um kind of have our status and 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 we have to feel accomplished and and kind of show off at that point and 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 compare ourselves to others boasting um you get a little older and you get settled and now you're competing about um money and children um, you're competing about who has the bigger house and who has the nicer car. And what is my child doing compared to what your child is doing? Um, how how big was my my child's wedding and how fancy and how much money are we in debt um, compared to how much you are and how fancy was your wedding? And, you know, it's it's this this now the competition becomes my child versus yours and, and money and, and how fancy our, our houses and our cars are. But, you know, subhanAllah, whether it's play or 
or amusement or or zina or um, appearances and beautification or boasting or competing in money or children all of these things Allah is telling us this is the hayat this is the life of this world all of these things are things that pass away and he goes on to give us the example in this ayah of of a garden uh, that that is very pleasing to the one who's 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 planting it until it you know over time what happens to that garden is it starts to crumble and it, and it starts to wither and there's nothing left after that except jannah or jahannam this is a this is a metaphor that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us is giving us in this ayah to explain what is this life it's like that garden it looks beautiful for a moment and we get very caught up in it but at the end it crumbles and all that's left is whether we were of whether we are among the people of jannah and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who do amin or we are among the people of jahannam wa'udhu billah we ask allah to protect us from being among those that's all that ends um that's all the result is of this garden uh, that looked really, really nice for a while. We can see this throughout this life that um, the most beautiful things are beautiful for a moment. Um, a, a, a person, uh, a, a supermodel, they could be the, the superest model in the world. Um, but, you know, what happens to them 10, 20, 30 years later? Uh, they, they, they change. They look different. This is the sunnah of this life. The most beautiful flower will be beautiful for about two days and then it withers. This is intended to teach us. Allah says that these are signs for those who reflect. We need to start waking up and reflecting on these things. When you're woken up from a sleep because of an earthquake and you don't reflect, it means that you're still asleep. You need to reflect. You need to wake up and, and think about these things. The things that are happening to you in your life are all signs. You just have to start to study them. You cannot go through your life in a coma and just think that everything is random. It's not random. It's happening and it's happening to teach you something. It's happening for you to seek, um, you know, for you to, to get a lesson out of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always speaking to us. We ask for Allah to send us signs. Allah is always sending signs. Allah is always speaking to us. But we just don't understand. And the reason we don't understand is because we're so caught up in our apps and in our phones and in our internet and in our jobs and in our family and our friends and, and all of the things that we're running after. We're just so distracted. We need to wake up and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and really reflect on what is it that we're doing and, and how and where are we going? How are we going to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We need to purify our hearts by by through tawbah. And that's the cleaning of the heart. And the other barrier we spoke about is ghafla. Ghafla is this heedlessness that we're caught up in all these things. What is the cure to this barrier? It is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dhikr. The cure is dhikr. We need to remember Allah more. We don't remember him enough. Um, at, at the very basic level, if we're not praying five times a day on time, then there is no way that we're going to have any hope of being successful in this life or the next. Because what we are doing is we are covering our hearts from the remembrance of Allah. We are covering our own hearts from Allah by not praying. And we're doing something else also very scary. We are opening ourselves up for the attack of shaitan. Allah says, Inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar That salah protects and keeps you away from shamelessness and evil deeds. What happens when you remove that salah? Now you're open to fahsha and munkar. And you're now, it's, you know, you're entering the battlefield with shaitan with absolutely no protection, no armor. Now you, shaitan can get you. And now your nafs can get the most of you, um, the, the better of you. And, and this is because we have removed the remembrance of Allah through salah and other types of remembrance, whether it's through dua or istighfar or or through qiyam, praying, uh, praying in the last third of the night, and through keeping our hearts connected to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a king were to send you a letter and you knew that that king could do anything to you, could give you anything, had the power to, to take your life or give you um, power, status, and, and imagine that that letter was in a language you did not understand. My question to you is, would you not go through every length 
to get it translated, to at least understand what is this king saying to me. Now we would do this for a, for a human king, right? We do this for a human king, but we have no interest in understanding what Allah is sending to us in the Qur'an. Allah has sent a personal letter to you and to me. The Qur'an, don't think it was just sent for, for someone 1400 years ago and it has nothing to, we're just some, it's just something we read you know in Ramadan we finish it and that's it it is relevant to you today and it will be relevant until the end of time it is for you personally do you not make the effort to understand it even if it's in a language that is not your native tongue are you making the effort to understand it so we need to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by realizing the nature of this life comparing it to the realer life and removing the barriers that keep us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our sins removing them through tawbah istighfar and the other barrier of heedlessness of ghafla and the way to remove that is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through dhikr surround yourselves with those people who remind you of Allah and do not surround yourself with those who take you away from the remembrance of Allah. That company, that bad company is a poison for your heart. Protect your hearts. If you want to be successful um, and reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to protect your hearts. Aquli qawli hadha wa astaghfar Allah li wa lakum innahu ghafoon rahim subhanakallahu bihamdak nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruku wa natubu ilayk wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.